Revelation 3351. From the 29th and the 30th of November 1944. God's love and mercy. Deep. This is the great mercy of God, that he lifts up to himself the weak, the fallen, and lets it taste the delights of heaven. He does not leave it in the depths but descends into the depths himself in order to offer his hand to the fallen and lead it upwards. And that which does not openly resist him also covers the path from the depths to the heights, it changes, albeit in an infinitely long time, into love and enters into intimate union with eternal love. Yet it is not of its own strength but God's strength that works in the spiritual being striving upwards, and the fact that God supplies it with this strength is grace. It is proof of his never-ending love which will always and forever turn towards that which has emerged from him. This love can never turn away from the created being but will always and forever apply to it, and this love demands an alignment of the being with God because such an alignment, a union with eternal love, triggers inconceivable bliss. For this reason God will not condemn anything eternally, only eternities can pass before the being has established its alignment with God and therefore has to languish in an agonizing state far away from God. Eternities can pass before the being lacks all knowledge of God and this signifies a state of utmost darkness for the spiritual being which was originally able to dispose of strength in light and freedom which made it blissfully happy. And God wants to return this bliss in the stage of perfection to it again because his love and mercy know no bounds. And therefore he first turns his grace to him. He gives him strength to live and to strive. For this is a gift, since the being does nothing of its own accord to earn this supply of strength, instead, the being receives the strength and often does not even use it for the purpose this strength is intended to serve. The being has fallen through its own fault by turning its will towards God's adversary, yet it would never ever let its will become active in order to ascend again if God did not want to grant it his grace. But God's love and mercy does not leave the being in its self-inflicted state but he seeks to help it ascend and therefore he distributes grace upon grace which the being can now use according to its will in the final stage. But freedom of will is often a danger because it is misused, because the will is used wrongly and this does not mean higher development. Yet time and again God's love is willing to impart his grace and his strength to the being. Because he does not want to leave in the abyss what does not strive upwards of its own accord. He grasps what wants to be grasped, he does not force the beingness to follow him but time and again his love approaches it in order to motivate it to accept his help itself. For the created by him was destined for beatitude and therefore remains in the abyss because it does not know about the beatitude of God's nearness, because this is the characteristic of the sinking, that it lives in ignorance that complete night surrounds the being and it cannot find its way out of its state of darkness by itself. And therefore the light itself comes into the depth, although not shining in its fullness, yet awakening a foreboding in the being so that it strives towards the light. And this is grace which is never withdrawn from the being, the path to the light is always shown to it, only its degree of maturity differs in measure and effect but it is always the life force which flows towards the fallen being until it has reached a degree of maturity that it becomes aware of this life force, that through it it can be active in free will, thus it can now also consciously strive upwards, for God's love constantly surrounds the being and helps it to reach its goal. God's mercy seizes the unworthy and gives it new opportunities to become worthy of his love. And even if the spiritual substance threatens to sink time and again because it opposes God's love and mercy with its own will, it will be lifted up again and again, time and again God will place it on a level where it can start its ascent to the height itself, for he leaves nothing in the abyss. His love never ever separates from his creations, 
and his creations are all beings which came into being with the help of his strength, even if his adversary's will was active in their creation and placed his God opposing will into these beings. His love does not cease to lift and raise what has fallen, and his mercy determines him to use ever new means in order to redeem the beings from darkness and to be able to introduce them into the kingdom of light, from which they have fled of their own free will in ignorance of their nature and their purpose. Yet God will lead them to this destiny again, even if endless times pass, for his love and mercy leaves nothing eternally in the abyss. He banishes nothing forever from his proximity which has belonged to him since eternity. Amen.